We are now going to discuss another circular motion, the non-uniform circular motion. Previously in the uniform circular motion, we learned that the circular motion has a period. It is the time needed for the object to complete one circle. And using the period, we can calculate the angular velocity omega. So the angular velocity omega is 2 pi divided by period and the unit is radian per second. And in the uniform circular motion, the omega is constant. And then we have also linear velocity v and the magnitude of the linear velocity v will be the angular velocity omega times the radius r. In the uniform circular motion, the magnitude of linear velocity v is also constant, but the direction changes. So, there is an acceleration to change the direction of v, and it's called the centripetal acceleration the magnitude of the centripetal acceleration is equal to v square divided by the radius r or also omega square times r and the direction of the centripetal acceleration is always pointing to the center of the circle. So now suppose we have an object and the initial condition of the object is at rest and then it moves in a circular motion. If the object gets an angular acceleration alpha let's say to radian per second per second or we can also write to radian per second square it means that every second the angular velocity will be increased to radian per second. So let me rewrite this every second. The angular velocity will increase to radian per second. For example, if the object is at rest at the beginning, so the angular velocity is zero, then after one second the angular velocity here will be added by two so it will be two radian per second and then at t two second the angular velocity will be four radian per second and then at 3 second the angular velocity will be added to radian per second so it will be 6 radian per second and so on so therefore after t second the angular velocity omega will be 2 times t or here 
2 is from alpha so we can write alpha times t so what if the initial angular velocity is not zero for example the angular the initial angular velocity here the omega zero let's say it's 10 radian per second and then this object gets the angular acceleration alpha to radian per second square therefore we will have the similar story that at t is equal to 1 the angular velocity omega will be added to so it will be 12 radian per second and then after another one second so two second the angular velocity omega will be 14 radian per second and then at t is equal to 3 second the angular velocity omega will be 16 radian per second therefore after t second then the angular velocity omega will be 10 plus 2 times t or we can write here that the angular the initial angular velocity omega 0 plus the angular acceleration alpha times t so now we have the situation which the angular velocity omega is not constant so the angular velocity omega is increasing because we have the angular acceleration alpha and we call this situation non-uniform circular motion so again in the non-uniform circular motion the object gets an angular acceleration alpha therefore if the object has an initial angular velocity omega zero and then it moves here so after t second the angular velocity omega will be the initial angular velocity omega zero plus the angular acceleration alpha times t this is actually similar just like what we have in the motion with constant acceleration and we can call the alpha times t as the delta omega or the changing in the angular velocity now if we have an object which moves in a circular path and the initial angular velocity omega zero is zero radian per second and then after five second the angular velocity omega is let's say 15 radian per second so now 
How do we calculate the angular acceleration alpha? All right. Let us first calculate the change of the angular velocity omega here delta omega and we have the final angular velocity omega is 15 so 15 minus the initial angular velocity omega 0 it's 0 so the changing in angular velocity here we have 15 radian per second so if in 5 seconds the angular velocity is changing 15 radian per second therefore we can calculate that in 1 second the angular velocity omega will change 15 divided by 5 or we get 3 radian per second so this is actually the angular acceleration so alpha here we have 3 radian per second square let me give you one more example suppose we have an object that has an initial angular velocity omega 0 10 radian per second and then after 4 second the omega is 30 radian per second so now let's calculate the angular acceleration alpha first we should calculate the changing in the angular velocity omega so that's the final omega 30 minus the initial omega 10 here we have 20 radian per second so now let's see that in 4 second the omega changes 20 radian per second therefore what we need to find is in 1 second so the changing omega here is 20 divided by 4 or we get 5 radian per second so 5 here is the angular acceleration alpha 5 radian per second square in general if we have the initial angular velocity omega 0 and then after t second we have omega to find the angular acceleration alpha first we need to calculate the delta omega or the changing of angular velocity omega it's the final angular velocity omega minus the initial angular velocity and now if we have time here t and the omega has changed omega minus omega zero therefore in one second the alpha will be omega minus omega zero divided by t and this is the angular acceleration alpha or we can write that alpha is omega minus omega zero divided by t of course if we redo our calculation we we'll get that alpha times t is equal to omega minus omega zero so here we will get the same result that omega will be omega 0 plus alpha times t